tell me what's going on with you and DuPont. Hey, what did I just say? A coach is a father. A coach is a mentor. A coach has great power on an athlete's life. Mark. It's re it's just your best estimate as to who any of these people are, and um, I didn't get to meet Dupont. I got to watch tape on him and, and study him as best I could, and talk to people who knew him. But there, wa I think there was a responsibility, and I, there was a responsibility to the people who were there, who were present. Mark was there quite a bit. Nancy Schultz was there from time to time. Um, there were friends of, of Dave's and Mark's that were there as advisors, and all of these people were so generous uh, to extend themselves that way, uh, and just to be there. I can't imagine how that felt, um, uh, to be uh, taking, uh, you know, to, to be availing themselves to, to Bennett and to all of us. So I think there, yeah, there was a huge responsibility there. Um, and to, to try to to try to make it as honest as we could um, and as truthful as we could. I, I had offered Mark Ruffalo the part of Perry Smith in Capote, and he t turned it down three times. They kept going back, and uh, I thought it was some cruel twist of fate that, in my mind, he was the only person that could play this role, uh, in part uh, because I knew that he was a wrestler, but it's just so much about him I, I associate with this role, you know, really his heart. And um, I got a call from his manager who said, um, could we meet for lunch, meaning me and Mark. And uh, we sat down and Mark said, look, um, I was a wrestler. I was a state champion. My father was a wrestler. He was a state champion. This is not just a sport. This is a way of life. It's a way. It's a mindset. It's about being part of a fraternity, and uh, I can help you understand what that is. Uh, he also said, and he's pretty open about it, uh, that he had had a brother and he had lost his brother, and that the relationship uh, that these guys had uh, felt uh, about as close as you can get to it. And it's something he wanted to do for personal reasons. I met Bennett about seven years ago. Um, and I had just sort of done, I think, my second film. And, and uh, he told me about this uh, story. And, and uh, it was fascinating. And I went home. And I, um, there wasn't a script at, the, at that moment. And I studied up on it. And then eventually I did read a script. And, and uh, you know, to be quite honest, I I didn't I didn't understand exactly why he wanted to make it. I didn't, in my under understanding of like why to make a movie at that time in my life, I just go like, wow, this is so dark. And like, and and it was kind of weird then. And <laughs> he's better, a little better now. <laughs> but I, you know, I just was like, wow, this is. Um, I don't know. I just didn't get it. I didn't understand it. And uh, I think cut to seven years later, uh, I ran into Bennett after he made Moneyball. And um, I went and saw Moneyball. And then we started talking about the story again. And I, I don't know what exactly happened in those seven years other than just a little bit more of understanding of, of stories and why to tell them. And what is fascinating about people and characters and relationships and, and just life. And it, the, it's like it opened up and, uh, and that was it really. Uh, and then I just wanted to go on this exploration and just keep digging about these characters and, and uh, which was kind of an interesting way to do it. I, I, the, the character, Mark had lived in my subconscious for you know, seven years in a way. And, uh, and then, then I really got to confront him in real life, which is terrifying. <laughs>